It's 11.30 a.m. Gavin Bassey and Phil Roberts are the two firefighters on Old Swan's pump engine. I think it's going to be the big one today. Come on, off with Leading firefighter Paul Nunes is in charge of the pump. Who's the call from, Paul? Did it say? Probably best not to down the other way. I would have gone down, figure that, yeah. The first call of the day is to reports of smoke coming from a railway line. The question is how to get there. Because the access is at the bottom, innit? You can't actually get down onto the line. You can? The access is at the bottom. Down by the back of the whoa! The Old Swan pump is the busiest fire engine on Merseyside. It deals with over 2,000 calls every year. The report of uh, an electrical box or something on the uh, railway on fire. The call to the railway line is one of a dozen that the Brigade Central Control Room is dealing with at the moment. So I'm going to go on to control, ask them where the calls come from and see if there's a better location over. It's fairly, like, believable, isn't it? Electrical, electric box, something like that, on fire. See something? See smoke by that bridge, but it seems to be coming from the right above it, not on the line. If you just look there above the bridge now and then, you get a bit. Look down there, eh? That's um, the back of the uh, the windows place, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, I got some cheap windows in there, you know. <coughs> Hello, Fire Brigade. Okay, calm down. Just give me the address slowly. All right, now calm down. The Fire Brigade's on the way to you. Red Watch's call to the railway is one of over 50,000 taken every year by central control. What road is that on, please? A team from the Wirral have been sent to an emergency at the docks. Where is it, please? A 17 ton load of chemicals has been badly damaged in transit and a leak found. John Robinson is the officer in charge. We're unable to uh, determine where the boat is coming from. Exactly. Yeah, you just take your time, Ian, if you if necessary remove other drums or containers so that you can ascertain exactly where the leak is and what the chemical is played on. What we're doing is, you're going into a system, the other two lads that have just gone in. We want to get to the damaged containers, find out how damaged they are, what it is that's leaking. It could be toxic in the atmosphere, it could be, it, there could be flammable substances, there's a whole mixture of chemicals on this shipment. Until we've got every drum out and checked it, we can't be sure what the problem exactly is with the leakage. And it's absolutely full to the rim. Get another four men ready, bridge with boxes and suits. Get man with the suits, get the man, Steve. Certainly. The suit that we're using is a gas tight suit which gives complete protection against any hazardous gases as well as chemical um, spillages. It's oh, jam it's packed, full, full pallet, absolutely yeah. packed. 45 gallon drums, 5 gallon 10, etc. As soon as they hit the damage one, we need to know what it can turn. Gavin and Paul still haven't found the source of the smoke. Getting what? Say that again, Tom, over. The smoke is getting thicker. Make it snappy, the signal box is blazing over. The signal box is blazing over. <laughs> Get it, signal box is blazing over. Where is it, Tom? <laughs> That's a crap address, that, isn't it? The blazing signal box turns out to be an electrical junction box. It could be carrying up to 650 volts at a time. Hang on, now watch out, because that is wired there, isn't it? We don't know it's if it's live or not. So there's a lot of wiring involved, but we don't know if it's live or not. So uh, we've got to wait for the railway people to say if it's uh, what to do, basically. All I'm thinking, Paul, is that is wire there, mate, running down the edge. This is rail engineer, Piggy Lane. I don't think Paul wants to risk putting water on it in case it goes worse or in case someone gets hurt. Watch what you're doing there, Phil. 
looks like malicious it looks like some probably kids have put a tire against the box and set it on fire he's done another one further along the way by the look of it hey there Gavin come down you know what, do the mum and dad know where they are, like? Dinner time. Tuesday morning, who wants to set fire to an embankment? We've talked to the railway engineers, and they've stated that they let these off, so we can put it off now. Phil's a week away from receiving his long service award after 20 years with the fire brigade. Do I worry? I think I lost that with nothing else. Stress. <laughs> Stress of the fire brigade. Every you minute. You put a claim in. I've got a wig. I usually do. I wear that when I go out. But when I'm in work, you know. I thought you had an on-fill. Well, <laughs> <laughs> look at that man in the front. It gets him. Look at that. Imagine if he was the LF, he'd be bald as a goose. I would. That's, I just can't take it. I think you've got a certain je ne sais quoi. The only thing I'm scared of when I go down there is one, the drop. Yeah. Two, the trains, and three, yeah. the electricity. Yeah, other than that, it's all right. Other than that, like, what yeah. else you got to worry about? Oh, put a bit of fire, fire, yeah. Fire. fire. But I'm used to fire. Fire, yeah. fire. Fire, fire. Fire, fire. Baby, baby, fire, fire. Ha, ha, ha. The chauffeur will take you back. We need to, bye. Thank you. Hello, fire brigade. What district is it? Thank you, we're on the way. Every time Red Watch have been called to the halls of residence in the past, it's been a false alarm. To take the lens cap off. Da, do, da. Five times I told her to take the lens cap off. Oh, to do da day. Hey. Oh, to do da day. Hey. Is it the halls of residence we're going to? Miles away. Got to go with the blue light because you don't know at any one time what you're going to, so you can't take the chance. So everything's treated the same. Oh, you just stayed still rather than try and make commit, commit themselves to make a movement. Let me do the moving. Tommy's been driving fire engines for 15 years. Two sets of air horns on the machine. One the driver operates and one the um, officer in charge of it. They work independently of each other, you know. Red Watch are being called across to the other side of the city to cover for one of the local crews already on an emergency. here and um, for whatever reason they set the alarms off break the glass cook in and it sets the alarm off i think i think this might say what it is now although it looks like it's another false alarm they still have to search the building back at the docks the teams discovered that two of the five chemicals on the shipment are toxic local residents have been told to stay indoors and keep windows shut Liquid dripping out by the back axle. Every firefighter searching for the leaking drum wears a gas tight suit and breathing apparatus, which can only be worn for 40 minutes. With just 36 of these suits in the brigade, there's only limited time to identify the leak. How does it feel with all that on? <laughs> Awkward is the word. <laughs> a lot warmer than we feel. Back at the university, the search of the halls of residence has revealed the cause of the false alarm burnt toast. You come to one, it's okay. But when you come to the likes of this place ten times a week, as a lot of these lads do, we're far away. It becomes frustrating then. Because you drive through the lights exactly the same speed, you, you chop the cars up, whatever you do, exactly the same speed to come to that ten times a week, and that's frustrating. Paul used to be a fire hero, cheated death on numerous occasions, haven't you, Paul? <laughs> fire hero, cheats death. Don't forget that. Fire hero, fire hero cheats, cheats death. death. Front page of the Echo. Hello, boys. Hello. Not doing much. No, no, no. We haven't stopped. 
Yeah. And well. you lads have been sitting there doing nothing. We're just trying to calm down. We've been stressed out all morning. Everybody stop again. We're off. Red Watch can now head back across town, leaving the local crew to cover the area. We've got to go to uh, the Swan for spuds. They are ugly, aren't they? The ugliest crew in the brigade, that. They have to put them on the outskirts of the city because they were scaring children in the city yeah, centre. Weren't they, Phil? Do you remember it in the echo? The risks you run, you see. Yes. Fellas join the job, they're fairly OK looking, you know what I mean? Soon tail off, you know what I mean? Look at Phil. Phil used to be a male model. <laughs> Four hours after the chemical leak was discovered, John Robinson and his team are no nearer to finding out whether the leak is toxic. Logistical problems are continuing to hamper their work. We're trying to speed operations up now. The handball in the mouse hasn't worked because we're running short of our... Yeah. We're running short of this particular type of chemical suit. Yeah, do what you can, please, John. Do you want me to rig in the set? I want you to rig in the set. Set the suit. Am I going to be able to access that thing? I've had a quick uh, refresher off the, the chap, so we'll, we'll give it a go. It might be quicker with getting the, uh, the pallets off. Each gas-tight suit must be specially cleaned before it can be used again. As they reach the end of their supply, the operation becomes a race against time. How many drums are leaking and roughly what quantity of chemical has been spilt over? <laughs> Finally, a leaking drum has been found. Right, the stuff that they've found leaking is tetrachloroethylene. It is toxic. It only took Red Watch four minutes to get across town to the false alarm. The journey back took them half an hour. Oh ho! You can't run over there, you know. Can't park there, you know, love. Just back it off. You have to reverse it. Very unusual procedure. Reversing down this alleyway to get in these engine house doors, which are dead tight. Old Swan Fire Station is the oldest working station in the country. It was built for when we had the horse drawn appliances. And like, it's about 100 years old, the station, you know, so. Drivers have to be pretty good to back it. Hello, Fire Brigade. Thank you. What's the address of the fire? And what's on fire? Calls from a 260 square mile area are taken by control and passed on to all of the brigade's 27 fire stations and 220 firefighters. Hello, West 41 Fire Call Over. Except for the moment, Red Watch. The poems of William Blake now on BBC Two in English file. Oh. Old Swan is usually the busiest station in the Merseyside area. Phil's first call of the afternoon is to a playing field next to the local hospital. The landing bringing some form of casualty, possibly someone who needs special surgery or something. And whenever the helicopters land, we have to be in attendance with the ambulance. There's a risk of them crashing or whatever or catching fire. We always come here. We've come to pick up a, a baby, apparently a one-day-old baby that's got severe breathing problems. Uh, Leicester's got a very good baby care unit, which is why we brought the team here with their incubator to take them back to Leicester. Use the hand, lads. The incubator, which will be used to take the baby to Leicester, weighs 150 kilograms, as much as two adults. Trying to phone our coordinating authority, people that control us, to let them know we're on the ground and we expect to be about half an hour okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> Modern technology. Modern. 
Old Swan's other engine has been given its third fire call of the day. There's a mad, mad day for driving. Sun's brought a few of the nutters out of thing. Lots of Duff got shops, car on fire at the rear of Duff got shops. Okay. What's wrong with everyone? <laughs> she saw us parking space, so she thought she could beat us. I think she did. Down there, left. Yeah. 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 The doors. The doors. Who is getting it ready for the summer? Someone's got the doors. <laughs> we got told it was a car on fire. Well, as you can see, it's not on fire. Looks like it's been stolen, stripped, and dumped. The motor car is not on fire, but vehicle is abandoned. We just requested the police let them come along, tow it away. Uh, we'll just stand by for a while till they get here, so that nobody does come back and set it on fire. Somehow the engine was still running. running. The key was out, though, being uh, smashed up there. Look. All the ignition's hanging off. The engine's still running. With the engine running and no key in the ignition, the only way to turn the car off is to disconnect the battery. You've been contacted the police, they say they won't be attending. There's no controls available. Seriously, have you told them that the natives are hostile and the car will be on fire in five minutes of leaving here? They know what's going on. Probably was not our job to do to the car, is it? Let's go. Let's go. Did you tell them that the natives were restless, Andy? I would have. It's not exactly a crowd of years hanging around us, is there? Matches in the pockets. Well, yeah, yeah, they just come back and said that windscreen will be in in a minute. Chances are we might be back to it, but... OK. Course. OK. The crew have no option but to leave the car. They have to be back on station for other emergency calls. Guarantee, you guarantee, you go back to that car now, it'll be destroyed. All the windows will be in, that our fault will be in, the radio will be gone, the battery will be gone. Is that our fault? I'm not saying it's our fault. It's not our job, please, I know. I know they're not asked, but it just annoys me. Snow patrol is available at the moment, and they'll get some on there as soon as they can. All right, yeah, it's just for your information more than ours, I mean. The helicopter's anticipated half-hour wait has turned out to be something of an underestimate. We're still over at Liverpool. It's probably going to be about quarter past, half past four before we get airborne. So it's going to be about half past six before we have dinner. Is there any chance of a tray of tea? A tray of tea? How many? Can we manage eight? Eight! And if you could make sure that Dane's got tea on by the time we get back with our compliments. <laughs> <laughs> At the docks, one leaking chemical drum has been identified as toxic, but there could be a second leak. If leaking chemicals were to mix, the dangers could be even greater. The teams have now been here for six hours. Four appliances are en route or have just arrived, so that the crews that were here first of all will then be relieved and can go back to station and get some refreshment. Fortunately, uh, I'm one of the lucky ones that are going back <laughs> imminently. Peter, 
Can you grab a couple of your lads? Yeah. The new officer in charge is Paul Darling. There's various products on there in different yeah. drums, but these particular, it's, it's these 32 drums that represent the danger, right? Right. Now, what he wants you to do, lads, to do, is to go over there amongst all that lot and basically tick off 32 drums. And if we've got the 32 on the floor, we don't need to unload, unload any more. Where'd you get all that from? Next door, but one to the gate. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom. Blue mug for you. Oh, I want a guy. little one. For the man. Biscuits, Pete. Well, they didn't catch biscuits this time. Oh, you're not What's very... wrong with your There's biscuits here, but I think they're the pilots. <laughs> oh, yeah, they'll do. These biscuits have been sitting on. Oh, oh what a guy. Two and a half hours and 16 mugs of tea after touching down, the helicopter's new charge is now on her way from the hospital. Give it 10 minutes and then we'll start a final walk around and uh, keep the children away and start settling in. Get these kids out first. Oh, you can leave the big kids. We come with you. If you want to. Who's going to fly it? We'll have a go. You'll be sure the volunteers there. Ten hours after the fire brigade were called to the chemical leak and the elusive drums have still not been accounted for. Forty firefighters have been involved in the operation so far. No. Get them, get them dressed back up again. Well, well sure, somebody's yeah, had to get them dressed up. Okay. Because the job's lasted so long and probably the chief's been informed at this point, we're running out of bloody gas tied suits. It's like, you know, he wants action. We've identified, we've spent all day digging in there, right? Yeah. Um, trying to locate 32 drums. We've been working it out, but we've had some logistic, logistic oh. problems uh, with suits and so on. The drums that are causing concern have got another pallet on the top of them, so they're working their way down to get at them, because yeah, we've got to ensure... Near, near oh, it's taken ages, it's, yeah. it's awkward working in the suits. I mean. One day old Jasmine Farhan has arrived at the heliport for the second stage of her journey to Leicester. So, okay. We'll be taking off straight ahead, probably going just to the right of the chimney. So we don't want anybody in front of us. Okay. okay. And if they're behind us, then they'll get an awful lot of downwash, so it won't yeah. be very pleasant. So keep them well out to the side. Okay. Jasmine has breathing difficulties. Her lungs aren't strong enough to pump oxygen into her bloodstream. A specialist procedure available in Leicester may be able to help. Okay, stop pushing. That's it. Okay. Okay, a bit more inside there. The flight to Leicester will take 45 minutes. Because of Jasmine's condition, the helicopter won't be able to fly above 500 feet. Up the little baby's all out. Why is it the size of the little baby? Ah, uh, yeah. Tiny, tiny. He wasn't wrong about the down was he? The fella who gave us the cups of tea said last time there was one here, a, a, a fireman had to grab a kid went running over to try and touch the uh, helicopter as it took off. Time for the, uh, the toilet for to go on the toilet. Back at the docks, the final drum of the second toxic chemical has been found, undamaged. We've identified the chemical that was causing us concern and as far as we can see, none of the containers are leaking. Right. But just as an added precaution, we've sent firefighters in in the appropriate level of protection and we just want to see those containers put out of the, the wagon and onto a pallet on the floor and at that point, the job will then change its emphasis. It's not everyone! One 
Got it. The leaking drums of tetrachloroethylene have been resealed and isolated. The danger's over. All that's left to do is to clear up the side effects of the operation. At Old Swan, it's shift change and time for Red Watch to go home. Come on, you'd be a star. It's flipping. Is it home time? I don't know. I've left it wherever you picked it up. Why well, is it cold? Aren't really? Right? Seven minutes. It's half of the ship in the world. Stand by for time for test. 1800. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, either. Yeah, courage. See you in the morning. Thanks for your efforts. Stephen Greenwatch. It's you. South 8 1, station officer Devlin. Great check, you'd be 8. Anything, Tony? That's it. Ball out. Thank you. No sooner have Red Watch left than a warehouse blaze breaks out in the city centre. Low Hills station officer Kim Ellison is in charge. The building is empty, but Kim has his work cut out. Stop the spread of fire into this building and uh, hopefully stop the building collapsing on the outside. That's the main concern at the moment is uh, safety of crews and also passage life. You can just, uh, just keep well clear the face of the building just in case anything comes down. To stop the fire spreading, firefighters must get in close and tackle the blaze from the nearest vantage point. In this case, the top floor and roof of the office building next door. I'll ask you for a short extension ladder, just so we can get up and down here easier. Like out there. Very smoky. Firefighter Paul Moss and his team have found a narrow ledge on the side of the roof to use as a platform to attack the fire. Down below, senior officers are planning the next move. There isn't a roof space, it's a roof, and it's accessed from the, from the top floor of this building and straight up to the roof. Not all of Red Watch have gone straight home. When you've been in work all day, and you've been going to bin bags, fossil arms, absolute nothing. Call some kids in phone boxes. You knock off at six o'clock, and you're on the news at seven o'clock that someone's got a big job. And that's frustrating. Which is just because we can't do what we're trained to do. And if you miss it, and if you miss it, you'll be annoying. In the city centre, the warehouse is still blazing. The fire is being attacked from above and from the roof of the building next door where Paul Moss and his team are working on an unprotected ledge. Well, it's about half out, but it's still going in the roof space, so now we're starting to take the roof off. Ready to work. Yeah! Excuse me one minute. There's an unprotected 60-foot drop to Paul's right. Yeah, I'll have another one. If the fire brigade can't help you, who can? That's true, that. Who do you phone then? If the fire brigade can't call, who do you phone? We're the last emergency service, except for Thunderbirds. The first fire call for Old Swan's night shift is to reports of a Red Ford Escort on fire. It's the same Red Ford Escort their colleagues on Red Watch had been to earlier in the day. It came on at 6 o'clock, turned out to a frequent area of calls, the back of Dovecoff shops, to a motor car which has been set on fire, as it appears, maliciously. And um, they're still trying to put it out. What I made, lad? Jeez! You will notice that the uh, local natives are a bit restless around here. Probably already found that out. I've requested the police, but as in all walks of life, they're very busy, so 
a lot of the time they can't get to cars as quickly as would, you know they'd probably like to. So they'll arrive at, at some time in the future to take the car away. There you are now. The warehouse blaze is coming under control. Paul Moss has made a safe descent from the 60-foot ledge where he was hit by a water cannon. It's just smoky, as you can see, while you're up there. Now and again, the wind would blow and clear the smoke, and you could see through the roof into the fire, and then the, the wind had changed direction again, and the smoke had dropped. So 90% of the time, you're working blind in the smoke. The water jet came through the roof and hit me in the chest, uh, knocking me backwards. And as you saw, there was a 60-foot drop behind me, and if one of the other lads hadn't jumped on top of me and dragged me backwards, I would have fallen down. Jack Maddox owns the building next to the warehouse. Paul Moss and the team were using his offices as a base to attack the fire. It must have been quite close because... Uh, see, the wall's very hot. Still hot now? Mm, feel it. Make toast. This is the first time Jack can see the damage to his office. What states are the floors in it? Don't you think? Gone. Mm. The fire has completely gutted the warehouse next door. Is our roof all right? That's what I'm going to check. <laughs> I'll have a look too. <laughs> We've got a few fires still burning. It's good to look. Oh, it's yeah. Just a few hot spots. <laughs> As a child, I watched this city burn in the Mavelets. This is small compared with that. <laughs> it's just a winding down now. Uh, we're getting rid of a couple of machines. Um, just dealing with hot spots. We'll get some more machines away and eventually the whole thing will be out and we'll be finished. You've got to make sure the thing is completely out before you go because you certainly don't want to be coming back here later on tonight. You know. The leak of tetrachloroethylene required the attentions of five fire engines for 11 hours. The brigade is trying to recover its expenses from the shipping company responsible for delivering the container, a bill of over £16,000. The Ford Escort turned out to belong to the mayor of Ellesmere Port. He was paid £2,100 by his insurance company and recently bought himself another car. The new one has an immobiliser. One-day-old baby Jasmine Farhan was treated for weak lungs at Leicester's Glenfield Hospital. She's now back at home and doing well. Red Watch didn't end the day as fire heroes, but they did get their picture in the paper. 80% survival. Yeah. Who's that then, Tom? It's me. That's you. Oh. That's Carl, that's you. It's me. That's, me. Bill, is it? that's the handsome one. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's 